Welcome to this extension of our narrative writing lesson on introductions and conclusions. In the last lesson, I told you that beginnings and endings of pieces of writing are the most important. Why is this? At the beginning of an essay, a novel or a short story, the author wants to hook the reader and make him or her want to continue reading. At the end of the narrative, the author wants to leave the reader with something to think about or a positive impression of the story. In this lesson, we're going to look at some introductions from some well-known novels. Who knows, maybe you'll find the beginnings of these stories so interesting that you'll want to read them yourselves. The examples we've taken are from the classics, so you should be able to find these books quite easily in the library. The first extract is the opening paragraph of the novel The Thornbirds by Colleen McCulloch. This book is an Australian classic and most of the action takes place on a huge sheep station in the Australian outback. Now, although this is only the first paragraph in the book, if you read carefully, you'll be amazed at how much information there is and how many clues there are as to the characters and their circumstances. Let's have a look. On December the 8th, 1915, Maggie Cleary had her fourth birthday. After the breakfast dishes were put away, her mother silently thrust a brown paper parcel into her arms and ordered her outside. So Maggie squatted down behind the gorse bush next to the front gate and tugged impatiently. Her fingers were clumsy, the wrapping heavy. It smelled faintly of the Washine General Store, which told her that whatever lay inside the parcel had miraculously been bought, not homemade or donated. I'm sure that you've realized that this first paragraph is full of clues about the little girl Maggie, her mother, their relationship, their situation, and their economic circumstances. In the first sentence, the author is already starting to set the scene. By mentioning that the year is 1915, the reader knows the book is set long ago. The description of the mother giving the little girl Maggie her birthday gift is particularly telling. The verb thrust indicates that the gift was given reluctantly and not with a generous spirit. Also, the fact that the mother does this silently and without any birthday wishes leaves us with the impression that she is uncaring and mean-spirited. The description of Maggie unwrapping the gift, squatting behind a bush with small clumsy fingers, makes her seem vulnerable and the reader is instantly drawn to her. Finally, the emphasis on the fact that the gift has been bought indicates that the family is poor and unaccustomed to money being spent on something as extravagant as a birthday gift for a small child. Now I want to draw your attention to three techniques that have been used in this passage. Here we see the description of action, the introduction of a central character, and the setting of the scene. Do you see how the author has included three of the techniques for starting a narrative that we talked about in the first part of this lesson? Just to refresh your memory, these are to include an action, dialogue, a sound, a thought or question, a description of the setting, and an introduction of a character. The introduction to the Thornbirds includes description of action and setting and introduces us to one of the main characters. We're going to look at another example now that incorporates two more of the techniques discussed earlier, namely to include dialogue and a thought or question. In our previous lesson, we looked at the novel The Great Gatsby and how it ended. Now, we'll take a look at how it begins. 
In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. He didn't say any more, but we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way. This is a good example of reflection. The narrator of the story, Nick, quotes his father and reflects on the fact that this advice has had such a profound effect on him that he's been thinking about it ever since. The fact that the novel begins with this idea makes the reader aware that the idea of how people are perceived is going to be one of the central themes of the novel. As the novel unfolds, the reader will question whether Gatsby, who is apparently so wealthy, is happy. Using the technique of direct speech helps to enliven this introductory paragraph far more than simply reporting his father's words using indirect speech. Well, so far we've looked at introductions from an Australian and then an American novel. So, it's only fitting that now we look at a South African one. Bryce Courtney's novel, The Power of One, is a powerful story about a young boy's struggle to obtain individuality in South Africa in the 1940s against a backdrop of racial hatred and conflict. The story begins with a description of the central character's first few years. This is what happened. Before my life started properly, I was doing the usual mewling and sucking, which in my case occurred on a pair of huge soft black breasts. In the African tradition, I continued to suckle for my first two and a half years, after which my Zulu wet nurse became my nanny. Do you remember the first lesson in this block in which we discussed voice? Well, this is an excellent example of first-person narrative voice. The story is told as if the central character wrote the story himself, and this makes it immediately ring true and draws the reader in. The opening line, this is what happened, is the kind of phrase that is used in everyday speech. It makes the writing seem more personal and also gives the impression that the author is going back in time to explain how the story began. The description of the wet nurse is also interesting. Mentioning that she was Zulu and that the breastfeeding patterns were part of African tradition immediately sets the story in South Africa and the character's early relationship with his beloved nanny helps to cultivate the attitudes he develops throughout the rest of the novel. The opening paragraph also raises some interesting questions. I'm sure you're wondering what happened to the boy's mother and why it is that he should have a wet nurse. Raising of questions that are answered later in the narrative is another device that can be used to grab the reader's attention. Studying examples produced by excellent writers is a good way of improving your own skills. So until next time, keep reading and keep writing.